Hello YouTube, this is Bruno. 24 hour challenge, technical Minecraft. We try to build as many farms as possible in 24 hours survival. Part 3. So in the last episode we built this beautiful iron farm. We are not counting AFK time in the series. I had my buddy Steve AFK for a, almost a day. And this is the result. Almost a double chest full of iron blocks. And you see, we are not cheesing anything in the series. So we are building pretty decent farms. This cobble farm that has collected a few skeletons apparently and a spider. This cobble farm is not the fastest cobble farm, but it will create cobble almost at hopper speed. I measured it at about 6000 cobble per hour or over two double chests. And this iron farm is also pretty decent. Now with four villager pots you won't ever again need to build another iron farm because no matter how many years you play this farm has got you covered with up to four golems at a time. But the major project for today is a trading hall and I've already pre prepared a little hut. These are our workstations that I want to do. So of course we want to start with the brewing stand to get redstone. But we also need to earn emeralds somehow. And for that we will have blacksmiths. And I actually shut off our villager breeder because I don't want to get them damage from entity cramming. And to shut the breeder off all you have to do is to block this path here so the villagers think that they can't get through. And now the villager breeder will be active again so these two will be breeding. But I figure we have about 15 villagers in here which is enough for the first deal. And I wired our rails so that we can get a villager in our trading hall. And the system is always the same. So basically we have a powered rail separated and then going into an unpowered rail, the unpowered rail will stop the minecart. And if we wire it like then we can always send two villagers at a time. So let's send a second one. And now you can recover the track, the rails, because powered rails will be at a premium for a while until we have a good income, source of income for gold. Then we extend this here. And now this is an odd number, so I will send one villager more. And of course the problem in a trading hall is always to make the villagers accept the right, correct workstation. So in this case we can just block them off using this block and now they can't path find to a workstation here. So hopefully if we want to make this villager a Fletcher he will become one and we leave them in the minecarts. And the reason I'm taking a Fletcher is because a Fletcher will sell us emeralds for sticks. And the problem really are the first few emeralds. You'll see in a moment, once we have 12 emeralds or something like that, we're good to go. You can of course also use farmers and sell them like potatoes or carrots. But the stick trade is decent, so all we need is to find some wood and maybe create a bit more wood. This is my little wood farm. Birch has the advantage that you can always cut down the trees from the bottom. So you don't have to build any temporary scaffolding or something to get to the top of the trees. And with fast leaf decay it will just be a moment until we have enough saplings to plant another row. And now we'll create some sticks and we can trade sticks. And if this guy doesn't have the stick trade, then just break the workstation and plant it again until he has it. Once you have traded with him, he will keep the stick trade. And the important thing about the Fletcher is that he will sell us bows. And that means we can craft dispensers and we need that for one of our next farms, which will be a universal mob farm. But for now, we need more emeralds. Uh, now, let's get a blacksmith in. And these guys don't have any useful at level 1, but if you go to level 2, then they will have the iron trade. And the iron trade is the one that we want to have. And I just get 
rid of these axes in an environmental friendly way. And now he will sell me emeralds for iron. And he will always sell 12 emeralds for, 12, for 48 iron, unless we manage to jack up the prices. So with a number of those guys, we will have all the emeralds that we need. And we just need to get rid of some shovels first for the very first level. And I keep them in their minecarts because I can later move them around. So we will later, if I do a permanent trading hall, we'll use those minecarts to move them to their permanent location. So sometimes you have to give them a little shove so that they are really in there. So if you can't place a workstation in front of them, that might be what, what is needed. And of course the plan is to get two clerics in there to sell us redstone. Maybe a few farmers to sell us golden carrots. We have a blast furnace with Fawn Armor who will sell us diamond armor. And we have a grindstone for a guy who will sell us a diamond sword. These are the essential workstations if you want to buy enchanted tools. Now these guys already have some pretty good tools sometimes at level 3. So for example here a shovel with fortune and efficiency 3 isn't too bad. The diamond tools that they sell are often meh, but the iron tools often have good stuff. And if Moyang goes through with their planned rebalancing of the villagers, where only librarians in certain biomes will give you certain books, it might be the best strategy to start a game to get a large number of blacksmiths and keep those that sell you iron tools with good enchantments. You can also try to get enchanted diamond tools of course, but these are much rarer, so a typical enchantment will be something like efficiency 2, while iron tools often have much better enchantments. So as soon as I had my first blacksmith, I also brought in the two clerics, so I could trade redstone. A few more blacksmiths for iron trades, and I brought in an armorer for diamond armor, a weaponsmith for a diamond sword, a couple of farmers that will later give me golden carrots, and all the while I was trading away, increasing my emerald stock. I would suggest to bring in at least six blacksmiths, or maybe a few more so that you are able to generate a lot of emeralds in a short time. So now is the time to grab some serious armor. Now protection 2, protection 1, okay, could have been better. But very soon this guy will give us full diamond armor. And this guy is kind of my trash can. Protection 2, okay. And more protection too. Okay, could have been worse. I'll take protection too. All right, we've got a decent setup. This guy sells us diamond armor. This guy sells us a diamond sword. And these guys will give us axes, pickaxes, shovels and hose. And it can happen that the prices go up a bit so that they won't sell you one emerald for four iron but one for six or even one for ten. If that happens, just wait a while, don't trade with them. AFK maybe for a few minutes and the prices will come down all on their own. Okay, and we will have to do something about that guy. Lucky that he attacked us and not the villagers. So let's quickly add an iron door here. Of course we need a ton of librarians, for that we need a ton of lecterns, for that we need bookshelves. And even though some librarians sell us bookshelves for emeralds, we somehow need to get the first librarian. So I went ahead and collected a few cows and bred them up while I was trading for more emeralds. But while I was waiting for the cows to breed, I started on our next project. We are about 8 hours in. So we have an iron farm, we have a villager breeder, we have a cobble farm, we have a trading hall or the start of one. But of course what we really need is gunpowder and bones. And we'll build a small universal mob farm for that. I've got the dispensers and we got plenty of redstones from our clerics. For the mob farm we'll use the well-known design by Gnembon with the water flushing mobs to a kill chamber. So I'll be very brief. This is an old design. There are a lot of very good tutorials. I will link Gnembon's original video in the description of course. So I started with a few double chests. This is a farm that We'll need shulker box loaders later, so I just left a bit of room to place in the shulker box loaders once we have a shulker farm. 
For now, I'll just start a water stream and later we can have a central storage for the whole industrial district with Schreiker box loaders. We don't have any ice yet, so we can't make this water stream very long, but long enough to supply a few double chests. So I built a 3x3 hopper array. We'll put a dropper in the corner, which will be powered by an observer clock working at double hopper speed. And now comes a drop chute that is high enough to kill most mobs immediately. Slightly over 24 blocks, so creepers and spiders will be killed immediately, zombies and skeleton as well, if they have no armor. And for the mobs with armor and witches that spawn, we have our campfires. Actually, it would be slightly more productive to use soul campfires, but I didn't think of that, to kill those mobs that survived the fall. And then we built water streams to move the mobs towards the drop chute. Feel free to test if the drop chute is high enough. This was totally intentional. And the platform, as well as the spawning platforms, should be made out of top slabs. That's why I replaced these full blocks that I placed. Because mobs can pathfind on top slabs, so they won't fight the water streams. The platform will be covered by water, so it's unspawnable. And we make a wall 1.5 blocks high, a full block and a slab on top. So that's also not spawnable. This platform is 17 by 17 on the inside, or 19 by 19 on the outside. So from the outside we have a water stream 8 blocks to the inside and in the middle a 3 wide stream leading to the drop chute. And we built our first spawning platforms. We go up 4 blocks from the higher water stream so that no mobs can get stuck under our platform. And we place a dispenser in the middle facing upwards and put a water bucket in. And then we create a diamond shaped form where we add 7 top slabs on the outside of the dispenser at each side so that all of the blocks will be covered by water if the dispenser fires, but no water will spill over. Then we use some temporary blocks to place the next dispenser three blocks higher, put an observer watching the top dispenser leading down, so if the top dispenser is triggered, then the lower dispensers will be triggered as well using quasi-connectivity. And then we build the next spawning platform, just like the first one, and we repeat this process as often as we want, in my experience, something like 10 platforms are easily enough. I tested the rates in a creative copy of this world and came out over 4,000 items per hour. So you will have just under 1,000 of each gunpowder and bones and arrows and rotten flesh and also a bit of redstone from the witches that will spawn here. If you have built the number of platforms that you want to build and with only an observer and not a dispenser, Place a solid block over the observer so that you have a gap of one block. Place a piece of redstone dust there. And now all of the platforms should be underwater. And by right clicking the redstone dust, you should be able to turn on and off the water. And now we build a clock that will flood the platforms for about 3 seconds and then give them time to spawn for about 5 seconds. So the inner pulse extender determines how long the platforms will be flooded and the outer pulse extender will be the total length of the cycle. I use fader pulse extenders here because I don't have any slime yet. Later I will replace that with an etho clock and go probably to something like a 20 second cycle so that the platforms are flushed for 3 seconds every 20 seconds. But here I was simply out of comparators and was too lazy to craft up new ones, so the clock was a bit short. And now we build a roof to block out the light. It has the same diamond shape but we will go out 22 blocks from the middle so that we have a light level of zero for each of the spawning platforms. Now we build a water elevator to an AFK platform that is 128 blocks over the hoppers. So make sure the mobs do not despawn when they fall down. Simply build up a drop chute, place one water at the top, let it fall down. Below place kelp, feed it with bone meal until it reaches the top with the soul sand block underneath. Break the kelp and the elevator is functional. While building the elevator to the AFK spot, the farm should already have produced enough bones so that you can bone meal the kelp. Now I put in a water stream. The clock that I built here is the standard clock, of course. It should be done with a sticky piston, but again, I don't have any slime yet. So I will replace the piston later. And the farm should be fully operational. So just go to the top, to the AFK platform. Build a little roof so that no phantoms can spawn and watch the farm in operation. So our farm is working like a charm. Now this hole in the roof is temporary as long as we don't have an elytra. 
it does block a few spawning spaces here if it's day and the light level is 15. But I can live with that for now. Once we have an elytra, we can close this hole. And I didn't put atom filters in yet. Oh, we need to put a block in there. Okay. I will also put in a cobweb, which will group the items to stacks and kill the momentum so that nothing lands there. All of the items will drop straight down in stacks. And I left a bit of room so that we can put in item filters, but this is a project for later. For now, I just use one of my trusty carpet bots, Steve, to go AFK here. And I will breed up a few more cows so that we can get books and bookshelves and librarians. Okay guys, we are 10 hours in. This is already looking good. We have decent tools, decent armor, not yet great enchanted, but anyway. We got a villager breeder, we got an iron farm, we got a universal mob farm, we get a cobble generator. The next project will be to get slime, but this is a task for the next episode. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Please subscribe so that you don't miss the rest of the series. We have 14 hours to go. Let's see what we can get done. See you next time. Bye bye.